A very good morning to you crafty lot. It is 17th of June. Can you believe it? It's already June. Um, it is Wednesday and today we're going to be working with the peanut beads. I got a couple of different applications what you can do with it. You can either make lovely bracelets more like a unisex wear as well or you can jazz it up with crystals and they become really nice and sparkly but I will show you the samples um, when I turn you down onto my mat. Now, um, there is so much you can do with this. I love them because usually peanut beads are the hole going from top to bottom, but in this crystal beads, the holes are going through it. So you can really make really nice and lovely patterns with this. Um, more like a, a store-bought piece or something what, um, I guess, you know, um, Links of London would do something like that. Really, really nice bracelets. Right, so let me just turn you down on my mat so we can get starting. I'm going to show you a couple of samples. I'm going to show you a basic one, which is more like a male jewelry, and then I'm going to show you one with sort of how to do the crystal one to jazz it up a little bit. Oh, good morning. There's so many of you, lovely ladies and gentlemen, here. Morning, Molly, LJ, Mercia, Alicia, um, Joe. Oh, LJ is saying my daughter is 30 today. Oh, happy birthday to your daughter, um, LJ. What's her name? Um, I'm actually going to be 40 in a couple of weeks. So um, I had planned so much things this year that I wanted. I've never been to a festival, a music festival. So I thought um, I'm turning 40 before. Not let's not do like a little big party, let's do like loads of little things. So, I wanted to go to a festival and I wanted to go do loads of different things. I wanted to go to one of these old fashioned trains to have luncheon, but um, obviously, that's not going to be happening this year. But um, let me know what you're doing and what's your daughter's name and um, what you're doing with her today. Good morning, Joe, Leanne, Lucy, Tracy, Debbie, Annie, uh, Ira. I hope I said your name right. What a lovely name. Mina, Sheila, Jitty, Margaret, um, Angela, Betty, Jan, Antida, Maxine, Doris. Um, they were saying, morning, Kitty, looking very summery. It's quite warm here. I actually got the window open, but I might shut it in a minute because we might um, get interrupted by the cars going on the road. Um, morning, Margaret, Antida, Jackie, Pamela, Leanne, um, Andrea. And I'm just saying good morning, Kitty, Sarah, Simon, and all the Totally Beads team, and everyone in our lovely beading team. Oh, lovely morning, Olivia, um, Jean, Annie, Jenny, um, LJ is saying her name is Kaylee, Kaylee Louise. What a lovely name. Um, my husband's um, niece, I think, is called Kaylee as well. Um, not I think, she's called Kaylee um, as well. It's such a lovely name. Morning, Jean, Di, Judith. Oh, there is so many. Mina is saying she's looking forward to today's tutorial. Um, Alison, good morning, actually. Oh, Alison saying, actually able to listen today as well. Oh, great. Morning, Bernie, Sean, Jean. Right, let's get going. Oh, Sue saying, how are you today? I'm very well. Although I'm quite a bit tired today, this morning, to be honest, because last night I had another one of those days, where, another one of those nights when I just... I call it a one more row night when you sitting there beading and then you it's like nine o'clock and say, so, oh, I'm just going to do one more row and I'm going to bed. And then it turns to 10 o'clock and you say, oh, well, I'm just going to do one more row and I go to bed. And I think I went to bed probably about half past 11 last night. So it was really hard to get up this morning. But hey, ho. Right, so the bracelets. Now we have got, um, I'm going to show you what we got on the website quickly so we can get started making. I love making them, using them in the length way because it gives you such a lovely pattern. I got um, a little tassel on there. If Molly, you, um, you're watching or Simon, please add the link in for the tassels because these are fantastic. Um, this one has been in the bag for quite a few months now. So the tassel itself has got a little bit, they, the threads are not as straight, but what you can do with this and what I've done, done with this before, turn your hair straightener right down and you can actually straighten them out. So they are really good addition, just like a little fun on the end of your necklace. So I have made them into necklaces before, just sort of in between the peanut beads, I added like little crystals and seed beads and um, making it more like a longer necklace. So it's nice to wear with your or summary outfits but you can do them in so many different colors and um, the tassels are really really great like let me just get this out of the way and then I'll show you the bracelets 
Now, this is the version I would do sort of as a male jewelry, and I'm gonna do a hematite one with the hematite colors today for my husband, and I'm gonna make him wear it. Oh, he will wear it, he's good. He, he sometimes likes a little bit of a jewelry. So, with the male version, we're only using the peanut beads and a little bit of sort of seed beads on either end to attach our clasp. Then, if you wanted to do a more sort of sparkly version, you could do, add the crystals and the seed beads in between. This is a different cant, so sort of, you pick up the beads differently. And as you can see, here are the peanuts sitting quite nice and tight each other. And here, because we're picking up the seed beads at the same time, they sort of got a little gaps between them, which I quite like as well. So, and you don't have to go all the way. I love this one as well, because you can just make sort of a little decoration in the middle of your bracelet and just extend it. So you can take your material even further and forward further with this one. And I just still added the little hematite button on there. It just looks great. Right, so on the website, we have a bundle. The bundle is all these lovely different colors of peanut beads. And um, if you are mass making or if you are, you know, at the moment we can't do any of the craft fairs or anything, anything at all. But um, hopefully towards the autumn we will be able to do some Christmas fairs and stuff like that. They are really, really good value today. So you get um, 10, no, sorry, 12 strings of these lovely peanut beads. Instead of £30, they're £19.99 today. So you get over 30% saving on them. And you don't really need, the strings are really, really long. So I reckon they're about approximately 60 centimeter long. Um, so you get plenty of beads on there and you can make loads of lovely bracelets and necklaces with them as well. We also got a bundle of um, crystal beads, which I actually forgot to bring home to show you today, but I'll show you on the website. So if you go on our website, totallybeads.co.uk, on the uh, left-hand side or up, up in the categories, if you press on that, there is a category called Facebook tutorials. Now in this, we got today's there and we got going backwards, we got all the lovely different ones, what we did before. Um, I did the little bracelet last week and that was really, really popular. Now, um, there are some kits, there is a, a PDF gone back up to 199 for that one, but if you click here for Facebook video, then that will bring up the video when we did uh, um, Lily Bracelet, so you can watch it very easily find um, what you would like to do. So let's just go back here, and we're going to go back one, and... Let's press on that again. So I'm going to go into today's one and show you. So today's uh, project download PDF is free, but it's only free for 24 hours. So please do share the video with your friends and family, crafty friends, crafty groups, so they can download the PDF free today as well, because tomorrow it's going to go back up to 199. So there is our crystal rondel bundle. So the crystal rondels I use in the bracelets are the two by three millimeter crystal rondels and you get 10 strands for $15.99. Now, a, st a strand is £2.50 on the website, so it should be £25 if you get all 10 of them, but today they're £15.99, so that's a really great one to get if you're going to go for the bundles. We also have um, some of the kits available. In the kits, you get your hourglass beads you get your button you get your crystals and you get seed beads as well so that's a really great option as well i think the only extra you can add on that is you can add extra peanuts or extra needle and thread and extra buttons so you can sort of personalize what would you like to do with it and then we got the peanuts separately as well they're two pan 50 a strand and the buttons right at the bottom these hematite buttons are really really gorgeous right but that's enough for the website i'm sure you can go on and find it let me show you how to make this oops sorry i'm wriggling i'm just gonna put this ipad there because you know me i will knock it over right so let me show you this basic version i'm gonna do with the hematite ones it is a um it's sort of right angle weave, but obviously because you're only working with a few beads, just the same same type of bead, you're just gonna stitch it together. Um, you could do this with a two needle technique or the ladder stitch. 
I um I do like leather stitch, but I think um I like I like to do with one needle and um just sort of keep going back from the forwards. So really, really easy actually. Let's bring this here down here and then I can see you right there. I'm so sorry if I'm missing any of your comments. Let me just bring you up on um my computer here. Um, Dorothy saying morning Kitty and all your lovely beaders. Sharon, good morning. Um, Lucy saying I bought everything from yesterday and now I want all the bundles today too. I think I need to go to be nice to my hubby. Oh, bless you. Yes, I, I know how you feel. I'm, I'm exactly like you. When I see something I like, I just want it. Right, so we're going to pick up two of our beads to start with. We're gonna take it all the way down our needle. You be pleased to know I pre-threaded this thread quickly just before we go on live. And uh, we're gonna go through the first one one more time. So coming from the tail end, I left my bobbin on there because I can come back later on and get some more thread off as I need to. Coming from the tail end, I'm gonna go through that bead one more time. And when I pull this up tight, these two beads are just going to sit there side by side. And that is basically what we're doing all the way along. So I need to step up to be able to add my next bead. So I'm going to go through the second bead as well. And then pick up another one. And again, have a look where your thread is coming out from. You want to go from the other side. So I'm going to... You're going into the same direction again, again because we want to do little circles. So these are tuck up and nice and next to each other. And that's it. I'm added my next one. Now I'm gonna come back through the one I just added. So I'm in position to add further beads. And just keep doing that all the way down. So you pick up a bead, locate my thread is coming out of the bottom so I'm going to go in the same direction so I'm going through the bead where the thread is not coming out towards where the thread is coming out. Diane saying are these crystals are bigger than the last one we bought? I'm not sure what was the last one. The last what Sarah used was three by four millimeter crystal rondelles I think in the hematite um, snake jewelry and these ones are two by three millimeters so they're just a little bit smaller. I tend to use in stitching patterns like this I tend to use smaller ones and um, stringing patterns I tend to use larger ones. Ilo is saying, I started watching you only one week ago and I'm already waiting for five deliveries. I'm going to have to move to a um, bigger room, I guess she's saying. I just can't see the bottom of that comment. Um, I know. I got so much stuff. I used to go to like, you know, the big, we used to exhibit at the big shows like NEC and Ali Pally and all of that. And I got so many kits in a cupboard. I always say I got the first five years of my retirement sorted. Whenever I retire, I guess I can get them all out and make everything up. But I think it's like, you know, you get so much enjoyment out of it. And like last night, again, it's proved it that you get, you know, you, you get so engrossed, so sort of into what you're doing. It's really relaxing you. You don't thinking about anything else. You just sit there on craft and um, just keep on going. So I think it's lovely. So I'm just going to add a couple more beads and then I show you the other pattern because I really would like to finish one of the bracelets and I think that's the one which is a little bit more difficult. So if you just joined us, um, I'm doing a basic version. This is more um, like a male or, or I guess unisex piece with these crystal beads. If I was doing this one, I uh, for, for a male, I would use silver, hematite or the gold color, anything, um, certain wouldn't use pink or purple. But anything like that make sure your tension is quite tight but we can still come back again and tighten it up so the more you go through your beads the more tighter your tension is going to be i'm using super size d which is the thicker threads what we do 
and um, it's really nice and strong. It holds up to the weight of six pounds. Just keep going through. So I think, well, shall we finish this one and just so, show partially the next one? You let me know. It, get, it grows quite quickly. Now let's let's go and do the crystal one because I really want to make one for myself as well. So all these samples are came from work and after the video I have to take all the samples and materials back to work so I don't get to keep them. So I really want to make one for myself. And this is what Sarah said yesterday as well. That <clears throat> we really enjoy doing these Facebook Lives because we can sit here and make jewelry for ourselves, I guess, which you don't really get when you when you're working because you're always making the samples up to what you i guess you know what is relevant to the the project we do right maxine is asking kitty how do you stop your bobbin rolling away and unreeling right so it depends on what bobbin you got um if you have one of these ones this one of the smaller bobbins if i taken the thread how much ever I needed and if I hold on to the bobbin itself and I pull my thread with the other hand can you see the thread the working thread is goes between some of those threads and that will stop unreeling it and coming off another little trick you can do is to pop your bobbin if that doesn't work pop your bobbin in a little grip seal bag and most of our kits come with grip seal bag and just close the grip seal bag because again that thread is caught in there and it's not going to come off. With the larger bobbins, they don't tend to sort of come come off, I guess. But um, once I have like sort of a good base, sometimes I take the thread what I would need from this end. So I take a couple of arm span of thread from here as well and, um, you know, take it, just cut it off and then just have the thread there right so i'm going to put this to the side you can see in a couple of minutes we've done quite a um nice little row of um jenny singh isn't this a basic leather stitch kitty right so this is a right angle weave because i'm doing it with one needle if i was doing it with two needles which i could do so then i would have <clears throat> another thread coming out of here one needle on one end another needle on the other end and when I pick up the next bead, I would cross over with my needles in that bead. And that would be ladder stitch. I like to do it with one needle because I, think, I suppose it's just easier to hold onto it. And then, um, um, but once we're doing the next one as well, you can sort of add rows or takeaways. Um, right angle weave doesn't have to be many rows. It can be just or, you know, but here, because we're trying to do a simple version, we really want to well it's not really simple um sometimes less is more i guess it's just um more masculine or unisex i guess i don't really know how to phrase it but um the look the beads on them by themselves looks really really great right let's get going with the um, version where we're gonna add the crystals and the pearls so the kits i bought home i got this lovely white and red I got this lovely amethyst color. I got this lovely light blue. I got the sea foam green and I got the silver. So do tell me which color you want me to do and I demo with that one. Um, maybe, I mm, don't know, darker color would show up better. Do tell me which one do you which one do you can see the best and I will demo with that one. They all were really nice. It's really nice, like sort of reminds me like a tulip. Um, because my grandmother always used to have tulips in white and red. I love this electric blue because it's got these lovely colours in them, but the this amethystic colour is really nice as well. So Doris is saying green, sea foam green, um Lucy's saying silver, silver. Seafoam, seafoam, so seafoam amethyst. I think we got more, most of you saying this lovely seafoam green. Um, so let's demo with this one. Right, so in the kit, you will get everything what you would need. You would get your hourglass beads. You will get your crystals. And obviously you got much more crystals here, what you would use up and you get your seed beads as well. 
Um, we're going to start with the hourglass beads and the seed beads. So we're going to do pretty much the same stitch what we've just been doing here. Let me just take some of these off for the more sort of basic unisex version. But we're going to be adding the seed beads at the same time. Just take all of these off. And just like that. Right, and we're going to need, actually, let's pull this down here so I can quite easily see them to pick them up and my seed beads and move this out of the way so you've got quite a nice surface. Right, so I am going to use a that color thread with it. So I have my thread, so I've got so much thread. So this is why I said about it. there is 36 different colors of thread comes in super and I know those of you like uh, your wildfire or fire line and all sorts of other threads what I love about Suplon it comes in 36 different colors so it's you can really match the color of the thread to the color of the seed it's using and I'm just gonna use this very lovely turquoise blue thread could you add a magnetic clasp at, at the end instead of bottom class I oh yes you could but you could have to create like here in this one where we created a point just with some of the crystals and seed beads um you could add a magnetic clasp instead of obviously your bottom class so although you this is quite a flat like um I guess like a watch strap sort of texture it gives you you can still point the end and do all sorts of different things with it um, adopt it however you however it sort of suits you I guess oh uh, Lauren is saying I think if you're honest we have got several UFOs um, around unfinished objects yes I agree with you um, Lisa is saying totally new to beading, just wondering who makes the hourglass beads. So these ones are from China. We do buy a lot. <clears throat> well, we buy from all over the world, I guess. But um, from China, we have tons and tons of beads coming in each year. Um, and we, we buy from Japan. We buy from Czech Republic. Um, not so much from India. We used to buy like when we first started. And neither, I don't know why, I think the company we were working with is sort of shut down and we never sourced another one. But um, we bought oh, and buy from America as well, all over the world really. But these crystals are from China. Right, so you're going to pick up the pattern. <coughs> Excuse me, let me just take a sip of my coffee because I can hear my voice is going. And Jean is saying, just bought these three sets of thread and they are great so many if you're watching can you add the link for the threads we do them separately which i think they're 125 130 each but we do them in a set of 12 as well and then you got like a multi-buy saving so if you're gonna use one and i'm not um some of these threads what i got here i had it I don't know, quite a few years because there are 72 meters on there on each color. You, It's going to last you forever. And um, some of those threads um, I probably have there over like six, seven years, I guess. Right, so you're going to pick up the pattern. You're going to pick up a peanut bead. You're going to pick up a seed bead, size 11 toho. You're going to pick up another peanut and another seed. Take them all the way down. And we're going to do exactly the same thing what we did in the previous version, we're gonna come back from our tail end through that last peanut and pull it tight. So you can see we're creating the same pattern we created before, but we got a seed bead sitting on the top and the bottom. So now I need to go through the seed bead and the crystal peanut bead. Then I'm gonna pick up a seed bead, a crystal peanut and another seed bead and I'm going to come through, just lost those beads. What's going on today? Go down to my thread, that's it. I'm going to locate where my thread is coming out from and I'm going to come from the opposite side to form my second circle there. Oh, Lucy's saying I'd love to have all sets. I might have to invest. Oh, bless. These are really, they are really different. Um, 
Peanut beads usually, as I said, they drilled right into the middle and when you string them up, they sort of sit side to side. I think we got them in hematite, we got them in cat's eye, quite a few different finishes. But when I found these crystal beads and probably it's not, um, saying peanut is not the right description of them. Uh, maybe if we said hourglass beads, because they look like shape of an hourglass I guess um, be, be more um, accurate I just really love them and I bought them in so many different colors and finishes it's just something different something like you know we all use um, rondelles and rounds and all sorts of different shapes but I think sometimes it's just really nice to have one or two pieces of jewelry when it's like a slightly a little bit different so I'm just gonna keep going and adding this until I get my desired length. Now you can either do, take this all the way, or you can do just sort of a middle piece in the middle of your bracelet, the, the decorative piece, which then would be at the front of your wrist, I guess, showing off. So you can take your materials even further then Oh, I can see you have um, answered each other's questions. They're already saying, Simon, I have emailed a stock question to you. I'm sure Simon's going to get back to you as soon as he can. He's in the warehouse today as well. I'm going to be going in just after this Facebook Live. Um, my son is back to school today. Yay! So we got a little bit more structured days back, I guess. Just keep going, keep adding your beads. I love this color as well. I love turquoises and teals and blues. That's sort of my color. I, I guess Sarah, um, when she chooses color, she's, she warms more to like olives and golds and greens. I, I've started to use purple quite a bit as well lately. I think as you go through life, perhaps your taste changes a little bit. Do let me know if you got a different, if you like a different colour now, what you perhaps hated with a passion when you were young, and now you absolutely love it, or if you got a colour which, like, you know, always used to use, and now you're not using it at all, if your taste changed. So I just want to know, it's not only me. Because I did, I did purple, I didn't used to use purples and pinks at all. And now I love purple with golds, like a really deep purple with golds. I think that looks gorgeous. Um, Jenny's asking, could you do a double row like a flat spiral? Yes, you could. So if I wanted to do a double row, then I would go around and add more hourglass to... You probably would need more than one strand then. Because obviously on the strand they come lengthwise, but we are using them sideways, I guess, here. So if you wanted to do a double row, you could do, and it would be, uh, you would link them up. It would look really good, wouldn't it, if we had a double row. Let me just bring it further up a little bit, so just let's get that. So they would sit there. So when I would do a double row, I would come back and add the other beads sort of right angle weaving back and it would actually would look really really good i might have a go at that later i'm just gonna add a few more beads kathy's asking will you get more than one bracelet from a kid so what you, it depends what you want to do if you just want to do a middle piece like I did on this one because I think it's equally nice as well uh, and add a couple of extra clasps to your kit then yes you you could you would have you know two or three of out of this one because the amount of beads here are not even half of a whole bracelet if you wanted a really nice and full bracelet then um, you're gonna need you know 
one kit will make you one bracelet and if you want to you will have plenty of crystals and seed beads left over so if you want to add, make a second bracelet just add an extra strand of the hourglass beads and uh, an extra clasp in there now what i can suggest if you want to make two bracelets because the crystals you're going to have enough like look this one because the crystals and the seed beads you're going to have enough add a slightly different color extra strand to your kit and then you can and the clasp and then you can end up a totally different sort of same tone of seed but the same tone of color but slightly different color so what one could be sort of your evening wear another one could be your day wear i guess like these ones these ones again the seed beads are very similar so you could um you could have two very similar but different bracelet i guess Right, let's just add a few more of this and then, then I turn around. Um, Carol's asking, can you show us how to finish each end, please? Yes, we'll do, no problem at all. Let me just add a few more beads and then um, I'll show you how to put the end on. Right, so when I do anything like this, I always add the button end first. Because your seed beads, these are really regular Toho seed beads, so they're all going to be the same size, um, however you use them. But what I find in the seed bead range as well, sometimes, depending on what finish it is, you can have a slightly larger or smaller um, beads. So I tend, as a rule of thumb, the silver lined seed beads always just a tiny little bit bigger than the sort of these ones are opaque finishes. I don't know why, maybe that's how they manufactured, if it comes out from a different machine, um, but they always come just a tiny bit um, larger. So I always add the button first, the button end first, and then I do my loop. Because it might be that you need 17 or 18, or maybe 15 or 16 beads, and you can check it. So you have a really nice finish on them because if your loop is slightly too small then you're going to struggle to get the button in it if your loop then too big then your bracelet can un come undone i love using buttons as clasps um janet is asking hello kitty would it, this be suitable as a watch strap how would i attach it to the watch now it depends on your watch what sort of connections you have um, we don't have any watch faces. We used to sell them years and years ago, and I don't know. I think the, the factory we used to buy them from closed down and never really sourced another one. But the watch straps we used to source, they used to have on the, the bottom line, they used to have a bar on either side. So in that case, I would probably make like a little loop of seed beads at the end. So imagine this is my last bead and I want to attach the, the, the watch here. I would add just a couple of seed beads, go through the strap on one side and then come back to the other end, add a couple of seed beads here, go to the strap on this side. So you have a couple of little loops on either end attaching this to the bar itself. But then some watches have holes going that way, so they would have a hole from this end all the way down to the other end. And in that case, I would just sort of loop it around, loop it on there, depending on the connection, what you have on your watch. But then you also want to make it so you can take it off. So your button would be in the middle like well it doesn't have to be in the middle it could be towards the side of your strap as well there's nobody says that your button has to be right in the middle so on one side you could make a shorter connection and on the other side you could make a longer connection this is the beauty of it when you make your own jewelry or you make anything you want you you make it's your rules it's your designs you do whatever you like whatever you suits you play with the beads if it doesn't work out and cut it up, rescue your beads and start again. I and mean, the thread is so cheap. Um, you can just sit down and play and sort of I work what will be the best way or, or best, you know, connection to, to go with your watch. I'm just gonna add a couple more really now. I keep saying I'm gonna add a couple more, but um, just really want a little bit of length on this side before I add the button. 
because I can take more thread from the other side and finish the bracelet that way, which I love doing because this way I don't have to join a new thread in because quite simply I can start beading from the other end as well and go that way. And the less joining, I guess, the less time you spend on the bracelet because it always takes quite a bit of time trying to add your ends, but really, really easy. So if you just joined us, we are working with this crystal peanut beads, which is more like hourglass beads, I guess. Um, but they, um, the difference between it, uh, this hourglass beads and the peanut beads is the hole how they drill them so we do you do get peanut beads in um hematite in um cat's eye we have minifori lots of different materials but they always drilled that way on the on the on the shape then what well, i said it's more like an hourglass shape they drilled from top to bottom lengthwise and then you can have a different pattern with it a different sort of purpose so it's really, they're really nice and different to use. And they can be very unisex, the bracelets, although I'm doing this with the seed beads and um, hourglass at the same time. But I started one um, earlier in the video, which is was just the hourglass beads. And then that's more like a unisex, a male jewellery can be as well because it's very nice and straight. They've got one made up and we still use the button clasp on it. They are made of hematite, so they're really nice. They're really nice quality as well, but you can play with it and do loads of different things. And as well, you could take your hourglass all the way down to one end to another, or you can just do it partially because you only really see this part of your bracelet. So where is my, this one? So you could just do a little bit in the middle and then this one is unfortunately a little bit too small for me but um go all the way to the back or do a full version when it goes all the way around this one is slightly a little bit on the small side for me so i need to make i'm gonna make this one bigger and i can wear it this is the beauty when you make your own jewelry, you make it to your own size. I always have the problem that whenever I want to buy something anywhere, bracelets never fit me. They're always too small. And I really wanted this very nice Swarovski one. And a couple of years ago, my husband bought it for me for Christmas. And then I had to return it when it was too small. And even the largest size was, largest size just the back went on my wrist, but it was a little bit tight. So, I have to make my own. But I'm quite happy doing that. So you get exactly the right size. But then I suppose other people got the opposite problem who's got smaller wrists that even the smallest bracelet is too big for them. You can make here, when you make your own, you can make it to the right side. Um, Betty's asking, how many strands did you need for a longer tassel necklace? Um, just one strand because I interspersed them between with crystals and seed beads just to sort of space them out a little bit. And the strands of the hourglass beads are quite long. Um, let me just grab one. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure them for you because I'm not 100% um, sure how long they are. I don't just sort of want to guess it. They're about 60 50, 60 centimeters, so 50, 253 centimeters long without adding any beads between. And if you add beads between, then you can make this even longer. It comes in so many lovely colors. You can really match your clothes. But then if you like me, I go for a bead and then I go out and try to find a top to go with my jewelry, what I made, not the other way around. I got a lot of turquoisey tops, so this and white, this would go really nice with white as well. And I got loads of those. Um, Catherine is asking, do your buttons come in different colors? Yes, they do. I think there's five or six different color, but the buttons are, the color is not 
all the way through them. I'll show you just one second. Let me just go through this. The way how they plate and electroplate these buttons and in fact all the sort of different beads as well, that they have them on a string and they put them through the machine. But um, with the buttons, because they're strung up, let me just grab some of these here. Because they're strung up on a strand, you only really get the button, the color on the side of the button. So that's the gold one. And the top and the bottom is going to be your lovely hematite color. So that's the silver. So you got the silver color going all the way around and the top and the bottom of it, which is what you're really going to see is the top of it is hematite color. So they're really great as well. They don't, not too much color in them, I guess. They're really, they're really nice to work with. Now and then, um, you know, it's just nice to work with something different. And that's why I love about these beads that um, they give you that high street look, but um, they're just a little bit different. Um, Chilean saying the sea green color looks very fresh and green. So that's the one I'm working with. So it's got this lovely aqua color. But look at this. So if you look at this color, because you only use turquoise beads in there, it's more sort of turquoisey. And once we add the teal crystals in there, it takes it. You, can you see it? It almost changes the colors of these beads ever so slightly. I don't know how much it comes up on the screen, but it changes the whole color of the bracelet. And um, once you introduce another color to it, which we'll do just in a sec. Right. I think I'm just going to add... Sorry, a couple more. I keep saying I'm going to add a couple more, but I still got so much thread left on the end there that um, I really want to not have to join new thread on the other side. So in this way, I started in the middle. I worked my way to one side. I'm going to add the button on first, and then we're going to come back to the other side, take more thread from our tail and then add the loop to go on our button. Um, Min is asking, are you putting the kits from Create and Craft to your website for Christmas ones? What you, I guess that's what you've seen today. Um, right, so with the Christmas ones, the double flat spiral that was exclusive to Create and Craft, so we can't sell it as a, on our website as a kit with the, the it had a gold, green and red in there. Um, we might release them later on, like maybe just release the gold one or the green one. We're probably able to do that separately, but definitely won't be able to do the bundle. Um, the Reese pendants are available on our website. So they sort of your Christmassy. Um, actually, I had one here, which I made up in purple because I got a purple top to go. And I really wanted like a, just a little pendant to go with it. So I made one up in purple. So we had the Reese pendants on today and they were silver gold. And a really nice sort of a coppery color with, with red um, rivoli inside it. So then that kit makes six pendants. And it's really easy, very quick make as well. Which is quite surprising sometimes when you're stitching things together that it doesn't take that long. And those mini jewels, the way how they interlock together. So you can see, you just bring it back up, how they interlock together. They're really, you know, it reminds me more like something what you would buy on the high street and it would be made of gold or silver, like a setting for a stone. And then you can create this with beads. So that's what the great thing about it. So that, that's on the website already. And Sarah's um, holly and mistletoe will be going on our website, but you always have to give um, a couple of weeks a week to two weeks, depending on what product it is. Um, exclusivity for Cree and Craft, and then we can release it on our website as well. So the holly and the mistletoe will be going on our website as well. But we have got a Christmas section on Totally Beads, a Christmas section on our website. So if you go into the, either on the left-hand side, if you're using a PC or if you're using an iPad, are the top press some categories. And we got a Christmas shop, 
and then we got so many lovely Christmas items in there. And I was actually talking about Christmas and the Christmas bob was yesterday with Simon because he said maybe we should do a um, Christmas bauble Facebook Live. Um, I know many of you have been asking for the tree, but the tree would be a really long one. So I will um, we'll do it. But um, I'm not sure if, if this June is the right time. I know Crete and Craft does it and it's really, it works really great for them and you can get ready for Christmas and if you have a little bit of gap there, I always sort of just pull the last one back and pull this bead down to get rid of that gap so my tension is nice and even then. But I think we could do the Christmas baubles because even if you're sitting on the beach, you could still be making them up for Christmas there. So I think with quite a nice length there. So I'm going to add the bat button on this side. Now to add on the button, we're going to secure it for the last two of um, our glass beads. So not just one, not just the last one, because if you just secure it to the last one, this can flop around. We're going to secure it to both of them and go through the button twice to strengthen it. So as you're coming out of your last hourglass, then you can add a one seed bead to the bottom of it, which I think I added. Yes, this one has one. So you can add a seed bead to the bottom of it or leave it plain. It's entirely it's up to you. If you add a seed bead, your button is slightly going to stick out a little bit. And if you leave it plain, your button is going to be more flush to your beads. It depends how flat you want your bracelet. Let's add a bead so you can see it, what um, I'm doing. So I'm just going to pick up one seed bead. Then I'm going to come through from the back of the button to the front. I'm going to pick up a seed bead and I'm going to need a crystal as well. Sorry, reaching across the camera, but it was right on the other side. I'm going to need a crystal as well. So I picked up a seed bead, a crystal and another seed bead. So this is just adding a little decoration on the top of our button because you can you can you don't have to, you can just leave it as your thread showing, but I just think if you had a few just giving you that nice little detail on the top, and then we're gonna go back down on our bot button button and pull this tight and then I'm going to pick up another seed bead and I'm going to come locate it where I'm coming out of this last hourglass. I'm going to come from the other side and go through there and when I pull this up tight, this just untwisted is going to sit right on the end as well. Now as I said we're going to secure, go through the same process again with our second hourglass bead here, because at the moment this would just sit at the end there. You can leave it like that and it would sort of sit to the side, or you can add more seed beads to the bottom and it would sit even more further out. So you can length, if you need to lengthen your bracelet, you can do, you can do it that way. When I was designing these, I really wanted them to, once I close this up, I wanted the hourglasses be sort of almost continuously there. So you're going to weave your thread around to your second hourglass. So as you're just coming out to the top of that one, go along the seed bead and back down in the second one. And without adding any beads, you're going to repeat your thread path. So you're going to go through that seed bead. You're going to go up through the bottom button, through the three you just added. and then back down that seed bead. And I'm gonna come back through. So I started on this side, I'm gonna come back through from the other side. And when I pull this tight, you can see that button just sort of centralized between those two hourglass beads. And I'm gonna take this down. You can repeat and go through the whole sort of thread, thread path one more time to strengthen it. But that's it. That's how easy it is. I like to, you know, maybe two or three of the hourglass, I like to sort of go down and come back up one more time just to give an extra strength here at the end of the bracelet because that's where you need it the most. 
and then I'm gonna go back up and I'm gonna start adding the crystals in so and then I'll show you the other end let's just get some crystals so this is so easy so once you finish this end I would thread a needle to the other end and I'm just going to take more thread off there and cut that off and then we would add our um, lovely little crystals in. Now do bear in mind that your bracelet, once you add your crystals in, is going to pull together a little bit. So maybe I guess add a couple of extra beads at the end, our glass beads, because once we put it together, so as you can see our pattern is a little bit stretchy here but once you add the crystals this is going to be nice and solid and not move at all so it's always going to come up just a tiny bit smaller than what you actually have here i have um, made one before that where i got to the end and i realized oh this is not big enough and then i added a few extra hourglasses there so you can remedy it if you come up short but to adding the crystals in is ever so easy um, as you're coming out of a seed bead, you just pick up simply a crystal bead and go through the next seed bead and pick up another one, sort of just running up and down the edge. I'm not going to add one in the corner there. And I'm just going to straight to the other side and then go to the first seed bead first and add the crystals here as well. So it's really, really easy. Because we added this, we woven our the main body or bracelet together with the seed beads. But sometimes on crystals you can have a little bit of a sharper edge. Um, but this way, because we did it with the seed beads and we're just adding the crystal as a decoration, your bracelet will be really nice and secure. And that's how easy it is to add those beads all the way down. You would go and then come back up. But let's turn around, I'm gonna show you how to do the loop on the other side. Again, very, very easy. Oh, Betty said, I would like that too. The first, the first got into beading, the first thing I got into beading by making Christmas baubles. Yes, I, I made quite a few as well. But what happened, sort of in my household that there's always a friend come around or you know a relative or somebody come around and she's like oh I really like your I made so many um candle holders last year which I got one I, I should gonna show you very quickly just here I made so many candle holders this year because I kept making them for myself we had this on um create and craft this morning as well i kept making them for myself and then friend or family would come around and say oh i love your candle holder it looks really really great and then obviously you would gift your buy and give it to them and then you have to make one another one up for yourself but um they're really great you know i love making christmas stuff because when i was little like you know they, they weren't i don't know about in england but in hungary there wasn't so much Christmas decorations able to buy at all. It was like, you know, we were making paper chains, we were making, stringing up popcorn, we were doing all sorts of different things to decorate the trees. And um, and then like, you know, it was, you, you were doing it for weeks on end before Christmas, coming up to Christmas to sort of do your Christmas cakes, um, your decorations and everything else. So the festive period, I guess, it's not just the Christmas and New Year sort of period in between. It was week before as well when you were getting ready for it. So I really, really loved it. And I love making Christmas decorations. And every year I do something. They are saying I made them and used them ball from the roll on deodorant as I could find Christmas balls. Oh yeah, and this is the beauty of it. When you're crafting, you can use so many different materials around from house and you're really recycling a lot of stuff and giving a new life for it. And I really love about that one. Me and my mum, we used to craft so much when I was little. I know I told you this before, but on Mondays, we didn't, Monday, when I was little, 
my little girl, which was like 30 odd years ago, I guess, on Mondays, there was no TV. That was the TV's day off. I mean, can you imagine now with all with Netflix and everything else we got, you can watch whatever you want, whenever you want, you can just sort of keep watching. And on Mondays, we didn't used to have TV at all. So Mondays, we would, that would be our little sitting down and crafting. Just keep going through this last. I'm just going to add a few more so I got a good length to my bracelet. And then we're going to attach the end. But I don't know, is, is Christmas more magical when you're a child? Can you remember back? Um, Judy's asking, where can I watch Christmas items? So we got a section on our website. We just had a show on Create and Craft, which is Create and Craft TV. I think the website is createandcraft.com. So you can watch back the show today, what Sarah did this morning at 9 a.m. But we have a Christmas section on our website as well, which is called Christmas Shop. It's one of the categories on the side. Um, do have a look. There's loads of lovely items in there. We did so many different over the years. Every single year we're adding something to it. And um, one of the guys at work challenged me that to make a beaded snowman. So you never know. This year we might be coming out with a beaded snowman. We um, have to make him from crystal, I think. I'm already planning to do like an icicle and other bits of pieces this year. So we will get our big shipment in, in about a month or so. And then we will, I, I ordered miracle beads and bits of pieces and we're going to keep crafting and doing loads of things. I can see you answering each of those questions, which is really lovely. Oh, I forgot to go through that hourglass bead. Oh, Simon or Molly put a link up. You can watch the show and put the link on. Thank you. Um, I like to think, I think it was more magic as a child. Nowadays, sometimes I can't even feel like it's coming. I know exactly what you mean. And I had this. About three, three years ago, I think, or Christmas time, or a couple of years ago, I couldn't feel the festive spirit, I always say, at all, running right up to Christmas. And then I was thinking about it, like, you know, we were quite busy at work, but I was thinking, like, you know, what's happening? Or, And I realised I haven't been making anything at all. I haven't been sort of... You know, sometimes, like, I would buy Christmas presents in September if I go out and see something. And I think, oh, that would be really good for my daughter or son or husband. And that year, I left it really, really late as well. And I think it's all about that what you do and how you prepare yourself and, and what you do, bits of pieces for Christmas. Because if you start crafting and you're making like little decorated Christmas trees, or you're making Christmas earrings, or you're doing Christmas jewelry, or candle holders, or any decoration at all, you can't help yourself, but you get into the lovely Christmas spirit. And um, I think that probably once we pull this together, it will be the right size for me. Maybe just add one more for luck. That will be, you know, you can't help yourself. We'll get into the Christmas spirit if you're doing Christmas project and you sort of get yourself to get some Christmas music out and listen to some Christmas music. Um, Debbie's saying, we split Christmas presents, some in the morning and the rest after Christmas dinner with Christmas pudding makes the day last. Um, Margaret saying, my crafting when I was growing up was being taught to knit and crochet and other to embroider. Oh, how lovely. Uh, my mum taught me knitting as well. And then um, when I was knitting at one of the shows, we, we got some scarf yarns we do sell. Um, the lady was saying, you knit backwards. And I said, no, I'm not knitting backwards. I'm, I'm knitting my way. And then I realised, this was quite a few years ago, I realised that I knitted in European way because I hold the needle differently from you. But hopefully one day we do some knitting with beads and I can show it to you. 
Right, so I think that's going to be enough length for me. So I'm going to add... Um, Oh, Sean is, Sean is saying Christmas music always gets me in the spirit as well. And you know, sometimes watching a really cheesy Christmas movie gets me into the spirit as well. And the kids really like it. So if you go along, I'm just going to double. Sorry, I'm just going to double can this. Fifty three, fifty three beads I got there, and I still got quite a lot here left on my strand, so it's enough for a necklace or something to add decoration in there. Right, so add your other end. Um, you just gonna use seed beads. Now we just gonna go and add a loop of seed beads going around your clasp. Now there is a set number, and in the instructions it does tell you what is the set number. But um, different finishes of seed beads, you might have to have one extra or one smaller on there. So now here, this it comes out a little bit more rounder on our more basic design, I guess, because there is no the seed bead, no crystal beads to set it straight. And because in this version, we have got the crystal beads on the end, that's why this one is gonna become more like a horseshoe shape. And this one is gonna stay around. And then we just use the hourglass beads and nothing else next to it. Right, so if you, actually, let me just show this. So if you just wanted to make a middle piece for your bracelet and then you want to extend it you would come out of the last hourglass beads pick up your pattern extend it as much as you come you can make up your own pattern whatever you like and then you would do a loop so you would come out of a seed bead pick up the number of seed beads you need to go through your you know your button can go through it and then go back down and reinforce it the other way again if i did this version i would come up and reinforce it a second time just to make this part of my bracelet stronger if you're doing the one with the crystals and the beads and you know there are so many different colors you can do but the end is exactly the same for each one of them so you're going to come out of the last hourglass beads you're going to pick up your seed beads going around and um, first before we tie off we're gonna check that it fits perfectly our um, button so here I'm just trying to talk and count um, the seed beads. I'm picking up at the same times. I think there's 19 I need to pick up of this one. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Right, so I've got 19 seed beads on here. I'm going to take it all the way down and then what i'm gonna do i'm gonna come back from the opposite side so just create that loop just like that i'm gonna bring this up i wrap the end around my finger so i create a nice and tight tension here and then i can take my button around and because i've wrapped it around the, the thread can't travel backwards I can try it, yes, that's, I think it's gonna be the right length. That just fits exactly right. And that's it. I then would go through, again, all the seed beads one more time, pull it nice and tight, just to give more of a strength at the end there. But that's it, but do always check it with your seed beads. I use 19 seed beads on this one. But if you're using silver line seed bead, you might only need 18 or if you're using some other finishes because these Toho seed beads are really high quality. They do, you know, they, they do, they, they are same in size, but the different finishes can vary. And once you reinforce that, we're going to go and add our crystals in. And I just, how I showed you that earlier, just gonna run down on one side of the bracelet and run up on the other side. So we got the peanut beads on offer today. So instead of 30 pound, they're 19.99. Where's my crystal strand gone? There we go. 
We got Crystal Rondel bundle on offer today. So 20 instead of 25 pounds, that's 15.99 today. So it's a great saving as well. We got the kit separately. So if you fancy a kit and then everything is there for you, do you have the option to add extra buttons or extra hourglass in it? Because in your kit, you're gonna have plenty of seed beads. I mean, I hardly used any from that pack and I finished with the seed beads on my bracelet now. So you're gonna have plenty of seed beads. You're gonna have plenty of crystals. The crystals is probably enough for a couple of bracelets. Add an extra clasp and an extra hourglass to your kit and then you can make two. Now, if you were to do that, I would suggest that add two different colors. So for example, if you're gonna go for the sea green, separately if you don't get the bundle there is another sort of tealy color on the website so that would be really nice with seed beads as well so you could make a slightly different bracelet for your second one obviously using the same seed beads and crystals but because the hourglass is going to be different it's gonna give you a different look so i'm just going to run down on my bracelet I know we started to add uh, crystals on the other side, but that's it really. It's really nice and easy. And when I come back up on the other side, oh gosh, we've been here over an hour now. So I'm gonna run down on one side, adding all the crystals, and I'm gonna come back on the other side, go into my loop again. And if you want, you can reinforce it the second time and you will knot your thread off with the one thread knot or so, but you can, I just want to show you the finished sample. So let's just get this out of the way for a second. And I turn the camera back around. Silver one, a silver comes with black. It's really nice and elegant. Again, this is what you can wear all the time. That's the amethyst. The amethyst is really nice as well. More like a, um, but again, if you get the amethyst kit, do get, there is a purple iris color which then you could use with that one as well and make a slightly darker bracelet. And if you've got two colors, you actually what you can do, you can pattern them as well. So you could one light, use one dark, you could make all sorts of different, or even the rainbow on its own would look really nice with this as well. Again, would give you a more colorful you know, stuff for your second bracelet. So if you buy one bracelet kit, add an extra one strand of hourglass beads into it and an extra clasp and you're going to have enough there to for the crystals and the seed beads you're going to have enough and i just spoiled all my seed beads they're rolling everywhere bless but never mind you would have enough there to make a second bracelet right and then you got your blue that one the electric blue is really really nice as well um you got your sea green which i've been demoing with and that's that one and your white one, which is white and red, it reminds me of tulips because my nan Nana always used to have white and red tulips. So that's that's the five colors of the bracelet. You can make more of a basic version. I'm going to finish this for my husband. So I'm going to do a hematite one for him. This is without the seed beads, without the crystal beads, just using the hourglass themselves. It reminds me of a sort of a Link of London bracelet, I have to say. Um, it's a really nice design. And then um, don't forget about the bundles. You can get these, um, there's 12 colors in there of hourglass beads. And that would be, that would have been 30 pound, but down to 19.99 today. And the buttons in there separately as well. Right, let me just turn you around so I can see you and I can see your lovely comments as well. Hi, I'm here. Um, so that's it really. It's really, really easy to make. Um, Probably, if I wasn't chatting, I would finish a bracelet in an hour. So that's quite a nice and um, good make as well. So just taking a sip of my coffee. So that's it. I hope you have a lovely day. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Um, what was I doing tomorrow? I can't remember. I set all the, um, I set some of the events up. <laughs> Sorry, I've got so much going on and I'm working on so many different projects at the same time at the moment that um, sometimes I, I don't know. My head is like a sieve. I always say that um, there's only, you know, there's a lot of things sort of in and out in there, but never mind.
Oh, Debbie's saying I like a Dessel Nexa. So that's the hourglass beads, beads as well. It has got a clasp on there, the same as the others, but because it's long enough, you can just get it around your hand. So you can make them into necklaces as well. Um, one strand of hourglass would do you, if I pick up, so that's the strand of hourglass beads against my necklace, but because I added the little crystals and seed beads, I'm gonna focus on it. Just throw this line back on, give a bit more light it. Because you're adding the seed beads and the crystals in there, in lengthening your necklace as well. And I love this and I love the tassels as well. Um, these tassels are available on the website as well. I think Molly is um, put a link up there for you. Now this one has sat in a bag for quite some time. So it looks a little bit sorry for itself. But if you turn your hair straightening, uh, hair straightener down to the lower setting, you very easily, you can straighten this up and it will gonna become nice and perfect and straight again. So you can, um, D. Oh, Lucy think, oh no, that means more bundles. Oh, bless. Yeah, so we're trying to do sort of loads of, give you loads of different options and different things because like with these videos, I'm not like, you know, trying to make you and spend your money. I want to give you, you know, the, do you learn all the different techniques and all the different things, what you can do? Then, you know, you, some people, you might have some of these beads in your stash to do use them up and it's great. If not, then, then they are there. Um, I do try to pressure Simon because Simon is the one who decides um, all about all the bundles and oh, multi row with cabochons tomorrow. Thanks. Um, so he is the one who decides on prices. I really have... I, I don't get involved in that. I'm just like play with my beads. I do try to pressure him every day that can we do a nice bundle because on the bundle we can offer like, you know, 20, 30% off, which is a great saving as well. And if you like me, I can't just have one color. I need to make one in sort of many different colors because um, I just like making them. And the more you make, the more I guess the pattern will sort of get chiseled into your mind and you won't forget it. Um, Lucy's saying it is the reason I can't resist the bundles is because of the fantastic tutorials you have me but I seen your picture Lucy I seen it on the handmade you've been making so many jewelry and they look really really fantastic and I think it's like you know it's a confident booster as well because when if you see that in a supermarket or, or, or a shop or anywhere else and you think oh no I can't make that but then but actually learn it and you can actually make it really easily. You can make a piece of jewelry to yourself. Um, I think it gives you a really nice confident boost as well. And when you, well, not at the moment, but when you sort of go around and people see you wearing a piece of jewelry, they think, oh, whoa, 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 that looks really good. Where did you get that? And you can say, well, actually I made it, which is like, I know it's quite cheesy, but that gives you, it gives me, always gives me a really nice and confident feeling when I say no actually I made that one <laughs> and then uh, the next question usually for me is like oh can you make me one for my friends but um I do do I do make um a few bits for friends and family but unfortunately I haven't got as much time as I would like to head right Nat is saying I'm sitting here enjoying making gemstone uh, gemstone tree number one. Oh, bless do do send me a picture I love those trees they they my pet projects I love them and Lucy's saying the group is also amazing. So on the Facebook page, we have got groups. And um, I guess the most popular one is a Totally Beats Handmade. There is so many of you like-minded people just sharing your pictures and sharing your makes, um, what you're doing from time to time from different techniques and nothing is too basic because sometimes it's less is more I guess so do join the groups and um share your makes I always love to see what you're making it's really sort of gives me a proud mummy moment that I I was able to inspire you and teach you something or even if you knew the technique but I've given you a, another tip of what you didn't know it really makes me um, oh, Maxine is saying, I will have to watch again later as I got a couple of interaction. Well, <laughs> what I said was great. Thanks, Kitty. Yes, yeah, so if you go on our website, um, you can find all the tutorials going backwards. Let me just step back on this one. All the tutorials going backwards, all the ones we did this month. And then you have, sorry, my hair is, I'm going to turn into Rapunzel soon. Then you have your May, March and April tutorials as well. So if you click on that, then it will show you all the ones we did. This is the bracelet, what we did 
did and I keep fearing this bracelet. I had this on forever, um, but since we made it and I haven't even taken it for showers or anything, I just I just really, really love it. But I think on some days when I'm making very more purple or blue, I need a different color. So we did so many lovely, so many different techniques. And let's just go into this one, actually. Oh, what did I do? I pressed the wrong button. I'll be back to this page. Doesn't matter. Let, let's go into any of them. You go in there, if you click at the top, then that will bring up the video exactly what you what we're making relevant to that project. So you can find it really, really easy on our website as well. You can also find it on Facebook going into the or the Facebook page and going into videos or if you share the video it will stay in your Thailand forever and I you know I do say like I do like people sharing our, our videos because I want to get more people really learning and making things and inspire them because I think that's the love of the craft is what all about because that's what we're really doing it all of us what why we're we doing beading and why we're we doing this because we just love sitting there and creating something so if we can inspire more people um Debbie's asking do you think the Sandban, Sandan Park big bead show will go ahead in October. No idea, Debbie. Everything is up at the air at the moment. I don't know. Shows getting cancelled, I guess, on a weekly basis as we go further. But I think it's really frustrating for the organisers as well. Um, we see we are booked to go and do it. So if we will be on, we will be there. But um, I think we'll be only now closer to the time. I just have to see what's the current situation is and how we're going. Right, that's it for me today. I'll be back with um, Cabbage Ons tomorrow and I will um, see you 10 a.m. tomorrow. It's me tomorrow, Friday and Saturday, and Sarah's going to be back with you on Sunday. I think she's at the studios tomorrow and she's having a day off on Friday. So Sunday's Father's Day. I think I need to pop out with the kids and buy something for Simon. And um, I'll be curious what they find this year because every single year they buy a T-shirt for him saying um the world's greatest dad or a mug or something like that so I, I i sort of guide them a little bit but i let them to get whatever they really want to get for him so usually it's something really cheesy but um bless them and there's usually chocolate they always get him a chocolate orange one or two each right so have a lovely day take care stay safe and um, keep on crafting and i will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m bye